Now it's important to understand that when they identified these 12 different energy bands, each with a beneficial and a detrimental aspect to them, that they use the term of colors. The seven colors of the visible spectrum and then other so-called invisible colors like ultraviolet and infrared. But for our purposes, for this uh, very brief introduction, we're not going to go into all the details of that. We simply want you to understand that the French were able to break up the spectrum of energies into 12 different qualities. And that although they gave each one of these bands in the overall spectrum the name of a color, that color is only one way that that quality manifests. So that one particular quality in the energy band might manifest as the visible color green. But it, that same energy quality can also manifest as a particular sound. Or it can be manifested through a particular movement. Or it can be manifested through a particular shape or through a particular angle. And so this is a unified science of energy. Color is one part of it, but in this rediscovery of the Egyptian knowledge, it's not only color, but in fact all qualities which are part of a unified science of energy. Here's a couple of illustrations from the French text. They could then take a look at something like a pyramid on a particular part of the planet and see how the 12 energies propagated in multiple spectrums around that object at that particular place on the planet. Or they could examine something like the form of a sarcophagus from ancient Egypt and find how on all three axes, um, front to back, side to side, top to bottom, these 12 energies occurred in a particular spectrum. And the way that this had in fact been intentionally created by the ancient Egyptians to create specific energetic effects. This led to the French discovery of what we can refer to as a fixed polarity geometrical emitter. Now all that means is that particular shapes were found by the French to have a emission of particular energy qualities that were very powerful. And that that emission of energy was fixed in place. It did not change over time. And so two of the very important uh, forms that they found were the form of a hemisphere or a dome, simply a sphere cut in half to be a hemisphere or a dome, or the form of a pyramid. In fact, the two are energetically identical. A dome and a pyramid have the same energetic qualities. Now another part of this is that the French had found that out of this spectrum of 12 energies, there was one particular energy that seemed to be the most powerful and the most penetrating. In fact, this one part of the energy spectrum, which the French called negative green, for complex reasons we won't get into here, this particular energy quality they found could penetrate thicknesses of lead that could not be penetrated by x-rays. They then found that the form of the dome or the pyramid emanated from their base, this very powerful carrier wave of energy. And in fact, later on it was identified by other researchers that this is in fact a spiritual carrier wave. And the Egyptians that I work with today use that term to describe this energy quality. This spiritual carrier wave of energy can be emitted by specific geometric forms. And a little bit later in our presentation, we'll show you the way that this manifested in ancient and modern sacred architecture using the form of the dome or the pyramid as a place of spiritual initiation to create the spiritual carrier wave. The thing I want you to take away right now is simply the way the French discovered and could directly detect that certain shapes used by the Egyptians and other cultures will create specific powerful qualities of energy. And that in fact some of these qualities of energy can be used as a carrier wave to send energy and information from one place to another place. In fact, we can even go beyond the 12 parts of the energy spectrum and then find subpositions within the spectrum. For instance, there was a Russian researcher whose real name was Skariatin, but all of the books that he wrote were under the pen name of Enel. And this researcher found that within this band that the French called negative green and that we're calling the spiritual carrier wave, this very powerful penetrating energy, there was one particular energy quality that comes at a particular angle of about 6 degrees 15 minutes. And at this particular angle, 
you find a sweet spot within that energy band which is extremely powerful and was used in ancient Egypt in the Great Pyramid itself. So that when we look at the form of the Great Pyramid, what we find is that the King's Chamber, the place of initiation in the Great Pyramid where the sarcophagus was, which according to popular tradition was the place where the initiate would lie and go through a three or a three and a half day death-like sleep where their spirit traveled through the higher world and then returned. In that place in the King's Chamber with the sarcophagus is in fact at that exact deflection of six degrees, 15 minutes off of center. And so not only was the pyramid built to take advantage of this specific energy quality, but also it was even very finely constructed so that even the internal chambers could pick up very precise sub-bands of energy. So here they got a precise sub-band of the spiritual carrier wave which helped make this form of initiation possible. So through this type of research we're now rediscovering many keys to the Egyptian temple science. In the French text they also give illustrations such as this where even the form of the Ankh itself, as we mentioned before, the actual shape of the Ankh creates specific qualities of energy at various positions on the form according to the way it is shaped. So for instance the spiritual carrier wave actually comes out of the base of the Ankh. The energy emission can be modified by attaching other forms to the base. In one of the French texts they describe the way that in, in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France, there is an Egyptian table from ancient times held there where these researchers went and they tested that table and they found it had these hemispherical forms stacked up and then the form of the Ankh, etc. on it and that all of the energy emanations from these forms all came together in a central place on the top of the table that gave a composite energy that they would then collect in ancient Egypt in the form of a bottle or a flask. So you could actually infuse specific energy qualities into something to be consumed. Wine, water, a liquid of some kind, food. So again, although we're only giving a very quick overview of it at the moment, we want you to understand that this French research was a partial rediscovery of certain pieces of the Egyptian knowledge and the ability to detect specific energy qualities and to begin to decode some of the knowledge held in ancient Egypt. However, a huge move forward in this knowledge occurred with the work of our friend Dr. Ibrahim Karim of Cairo, who I've mentioned to you several times now, as the founder of modern biogeometry. And this is our friend Dr. Karim. Dr. Karim uh, speaks many different European languages. He's a very a well-educated and cultured man. He's one of the leading architects in Egypt. He's also known as a brilliant energy researcher and healer. And Dr. Karim, back in the 1970s, through particular people that he had met and worked with in Egypt, which we'll describe in the foundation training in biogeometry, was introduced to some of the French work as well as knowledge of the Egyptian temple sciences from other Egyptians. He then worked with this knowledge by the French and what he then acquired from his other Egyptian colleagues and was able to reconstruct a modern version of the Egyptian inner temple science. Now the amazing thing about Dr. Karim is not only the brilliance of his mind in being able to put together this science but also the openness of his spirit in not only teaching other Egyptians this hidden knowledge but his willingness to also teach people from Europe, North America, from around the world this knowledge which had never been made available to uh, the public in the past. But it's Dr. Karim's very strong belief that it's time for this knowledge to come out to those who are ready to receive it so it can be used to help heal people and to heal our world. So again, this is our friend Dr. Ibrahim Karim and he added the pieces to the French work, to the European research that were vital pieces that they did not understand but which are essential to know to not only use this information practically but also to use it safely.